Please join in the opening. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you are tuning in. We're glad you could tune in to see our streaming broadcast of this week's worship that happens on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because of our sinful and holier-than-thou judgment of others, we ourselves deserve to be judged by our Heavenly Father. Most merciful God, our eyes are wide open to the sins and shortcomings of others. We see the smallest details of the faults of our neighbors, but fail to see the large-scale sin in our own life. On the other hand, our eyes are too often closed to your commands. We see only our self-righteousness and think we have no need for any kind of help or forgiveness. Though we deserve your present and eternal punishment, we plead for mercy and beg for your grace. In his mercy and grace, God's eyes are blinded to our sin by the death of Jesus on the cross. Though we deserve his complete and total judgment, our punishment was placed on his Son. Though we are unjust in our judgment of others, God's judgment is righteous and perfect. In his mercy, he forgives totally and completely. It is my joy to declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew 5 and 7, and John, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your father, who is in heaven. Judge not that you not be judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard teaching. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. 
And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel Response I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some weeks ago, you heard me talk about my biblical hero of the faith. No, it wasn't Joseph, although he was perhaps the finest example of a trusting husband, father, provider, and protector. No, it wasn't Moses, even though he became a great leader and a man of God. And no, it wasn't Paul, who persevered through great tribulation and planted many churches. No, if you recall, I was talking about Peter, the one whose foot was often in his mouth, the one who could not live up to his own promises, the one with the most embarrassing moments of underachievement as a disciple of Jesus, the most impetuous, most flawed, most excitable, and most real person depicted in Scripture. That God uses someone so simple, so normal, and so relatable shows that there is hope for me. Well, today we revisit Peter in one of his few shining moments, laying down one of the best human responses to God's holy word. Now, what Jesus was teaching in this moment was hard to accept. It contradicted everything of human reason and emotion. The idea of loving your enemy, praying for those who would do you harm. Is that how we feel about those who treat us this way? Judge not that you be not judged. Jesus next said. Well, we always think our opinions are right. Right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be our opinions. So how easy to look down on those or judge those who don't live up to our standards. Another hard teaching? To trust in Him. For the people of the day, that meant a carpenter from Nazareth. For us today, it means trusting in a 2,000-year-old prophet who claimed to be the Son of God. To not rely on our own strength, our own reasoning, our own experience. To rely on something or someone unseen. To believe that even our unspoken thoughts are heard in this exercise called prayer. To trust scrolls of parchment ages old that are said to contain God's word. 
to go against everything ingrained, every bit of intuition, to go against conventional wisdom that teaches us that we have to earn everything we get, and instead to just believe, have a little faith, receive in our hearts that Jesus died for you and me, and know that his resurrection means the forgiveness of our sins and the redemption of our souls. A free gift of grace? Can it truly be? And the last hard teaching that Jesus brings, it's not in today's written gospel lesson, but very much a part of that John chapter 6 moment. Jesus teaches about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Jesus says, this bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, this was the tipping point. Those who came to Jesus out of curiosity, those who were seekers, those who were waiting on the salvation of the Lord, they came to Jesus. They heard his words. They saw his miracles, and they were beginning to believe. And then this. This Jewish priest from Nazareth, a prophet of God? Perhaps. The promised Messiah? He just could be. To eat of his flesh and drink his blood for life? Rational minds said no. This was repulsive. Faith was pushed too far. Jesus' teaching had moved beyond physical truth to a spiritual truth. His audience remembered the stories of manna from heaven, something physical, and the Jews still searched for that kind of bread. But the bread from heaven that Jesus brings gives eternal life, his flesh, his blood, spiritual truth they weren't ready for. Eating this bread means believing in him. And believing in him means faith in his words and his actions. And faith in his words and actions means eternal life, a free gift to sinners. Now, the Christian church has had 2,000 years to absorb the spiritual truth. And you and I have had our lifetimes to receive and to believe this hard teaching, the spiritual truth of God through his precious son, Jesus. Yes, it's a hard teaching. But we, when we come to the communion rail, we are not repulsed at the thought of receiving Jesus' body and blood, nor are we resistant in our belief. To the people of Jesus' day, their flesh had enough trouble absorbing messages of law, of showing compassion to enemies, refraining from judgment, let alone to comprehend a message of spirit. And thus, many turned away. Now, take yourself to that moment. In his humanity, how would Jesus feel having been rejected? If I were to stand here in front of a live congregation and preach gospel truth, but one by one, every member in attendance walked out of the church until no one was left. Well, it goes without saying, I would feel sad and rejected. Would Jesus not feel these same emotions 
just because he's Jesus? Jesus preached the way to the Father. Jesus brings the hope of life to God's children. Jesus foreshadows his life to be given and the sacred sacrament by which we remember and receive forgiveness. What a blessing he prepares. But when the teaching gets too deep, the weak in faith walked away. The weak in faith substituted their own sense of reason to the deep things of God. The weak in faith reject the very Son of God in the flesh who came only to proclaim a gospel of love. How would Jesus feel? And at last, seeing his followers walk away, Jesus looks to his own his hand-picked group of 12 students called disciples, those that he's invested the most in, and asks if they too want to leave. Now can you imagine Jesus looking at you with loving eyes, looking in your eyes, not begging, not pleading, not coercing, but allowing you to walk away if the teaching is too much. And there's Peter. Where a yes or no answer would have sufficed, Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter's faith grasped Jesus' truth. And he could not see ever finding someone to take Jesus' place. Because only he, Jesus, has the words of eternal life. His body, his blood, all we are called to do and to be, all stem from this promise of life. And his own resurrection would be the sign of credibility that all he taught, all he promised, all he fulfilled, not just words for people walking around in robes and sandals, but for you and me today. Yes, these are the words of eternal life, and Jesus has them. Friends, I know you are with me when I say, I do not want to walk away. I don't want to worship a God who is no higher than my own reason or logic. I don't want a God that I fully understand. I don't want a God who makes everything clear to me in my minuscule comprehension to my fleeting moments of doubt and mistrust. I want a God who is above all that. I want a God whose ways are higher than my ways. I want a God who challenges my understanding, that I may look up to him from my simple place. I want a God who can handle the complexities of the universe and of human drama. I want a God who tells me things above my level of understanding. I want a God and a Savior that I can trust, that I can surrender to Him the details, all the things I cannot handle. And I want a God who will himself work out the terms of my salvation and call me by his gifts, call me by faith. And if that Savior wants to give me his flesh to eat and his blood to drink, then like Peter, count me all in. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life for you are the Holy One of God.
Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, your ways are not our ways. Your ways are above all that we can imagine, understand, or comprehend. And for this, we are truly grateful. We thank and praise you for your Son who came in the flesh that we may see God the Father through him. We thank you for his teaching and for the Holy Spirit who gives us faith to believe the teachings that are beyond us. We thank you for our Lord's flesh and blood, given and shed for the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for Peter's confession, for showing us the one who has the words of eternal life the Holy One of God. May we never walk away, but Lord, we ask, hold us close and nurture our faith always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with those for whom we pray and continue to pray. <clears throat> we ask a prayer of blessing upon Abby Kiefer and John Gabrielski, who will be married here this weekend. We ask you to bless their, their home and that Christ would become the centerpiece of their life. We pray for the Neal family at the sudden loss of a dear friend of mine, Charles Neal. And Lord, we ask you to be with Marion, who will now live alone as she mourns the loss of her husband. And Lord, grant her your grace and solace that she may have her joy returned. And Lord, we continue to pray for Nancy Riker, still having trouble recovering from surgery. Lord, we ask you to give her patience and healing. And Lord, be with Wayne that he may continue to support her. Give him the strength that he needs in both body and spirit. For these, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may, Lord, may our people be ever patient, ever vigilant, and ever mindful of your good gifts. Keep us safe in this uncertain time. Help your people to use good judgment. Help our leaders to lead by example. And most of all, may your will be done among us. Lord, protect those who protect us. Our medical community, law enforcement, military personnel. And Lord, protect our children. Help us through this church, through your word, to teach the faith to them that they too may have the words of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Praise be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless America.